I think this is a way to kind of uh, attack the issue uh, in a compassionate way rather than trying to you know, regulate people off the curb, which just uh, doesn't work. Uh, because I want to talk to him about his ordinance that he's putting forward with uh, Ian Abreu, uh, and Kerry, Kerry Winterson, I believe maybe Joe Lopes. We can ask him who his, who his co-sponsors are on this. To put up signs to encourage people to donate to the United Way and the charitable network that the United Way supports uh, in lieu of giving to the homeless. Although I don't know that the, that the ordinance even actually says that, as I think about or that the sign would say that, because there are speech issues here, there's constitutional issues here. So anyway, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, Hugh. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me on. Uh, so Hugh, talk, talk to us about what your ordinance uh what it says, and, and well, first of all, clear up, who, who are the co-sponsors at this point in the city council? So this is co-sponsored by city council president Joe Lopes and councilors Abram and Wentrison. Okay. Um, and so it, it will be a city council meeting on the 17th, and, you know, so that's just the beginning of the conversation. Uh, and the, the most request that the city explore uh, placing signage in, uh, at locations that are high volume for panhandling, and that the signs essentially say, uh, "Give to you know a, a local charity uh, through a telephone number like a, a number like three one one, call this number." So it establishes a more responsible way for people to give uh, to help. You know, uh, feed shelter and mental health. It is You're breaking up on us, Hugh. I don't know if you can. You, yeah, you're breaking up on us. I think you're in a tunnel somewhere or a bunker. Can you hear me? We can hear you now. That's much better. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, so it basically facilitates more effective and responsible giving to the at risk population um, by setting up like a 311 number. Can give. And the, the, the purpose of this is to deter hand to hand donations. Uh, it's, it's just inherently dangerous uh, for the panhandler and the general public, especially when there's a, it's a high traffic location, which it, which it typically is. Um, and also, it's just not a good uh, introduction to the city if you're if you're coming here to enjoy one of our festivals, like the Feast coming up, maybe if you're uh, for the you're, you're greeted uh, by a panhandler. It's just not not the the best way to uh, become acquainted with our city. So just, I think this is a way to kind of uh, attack the issue uh, in a compassionate way, rather than trying to you know, regulate people off the curb, which just uh, doesn't work. And we've seen that time and time again in other uh, municipalities. Yeah, as as one of our previous callers, Mike Jansen, pointed out, that when you give those people money, generally, not always, but mostly. You're giving. You're actually hurting them when you think you're helping them because it's probably going to, to the fentanyl, the, the heroin, the uh, the crack, or the alcohol. Right, right. And you know, with a system like this, you can have more confidence that that your money is actually going to something that will help them. That you know, your pocket change will help, like make a real change for them, rather than just getting them their, you know, their next can of beer or just per- perpetuating the uh, the situation that they're in. Now, you're, you're, you are an attorney. What, what are your feelings on the constitutionality of this, and, and, and how, how, how you, what's your feelings on, on the, how the ACLU is going to weigh in on this? I don't think the ACLU will weigh in on this, actually, because uh, this doesn't regulate speech. This just uh, sets up a system for uh, folks to give in a different way. It doesn't say that uh, they can't uh, be on the, you know, the, at the intersection asking for donations. Uh, um, it's a, it's an ordinance that exists in other municipalities, and uh, you know this just this just creates a, a better way to give. It's not saying that they can't do anything. It's not uh, the government cracking down on protected speech. So I, I'm really not uh, very concerned about any First Amendment implications for this uh, for this ordinance. No, that, that that that's that that's a good point. Now <clears throat> there are some people that they're they're saying this won't solve 
the entire problem. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Was this designed to solve the entire problem, or is this just part of just looking to make a, a dent in the problem or to steer steer things? In other words, do you view this as a as the catch all, the the ultimate uh, solution? Or is that your design on this? No, this definitely isn't a uh, like a panhandling panacea. There is no such thing. There's no silver bullet for this uh, this issue, uh, but it, it it does provide a, a way to decrease the amount of panhandling that happens in the city. And, you know, New Bedford is a compassionate city. Uh, if it wasn't, you wouldn't see these folks uh, on on the corner asking for donations. You know, people are giving uh, and. So if we can just reduce the amount that people are giving uh, directly to these folks, then there's there's less reason for them to be standing there, and it actually encourages them to go and seek out these services. If, you know, if they can't uh, get their fix, they're going to go and try to get help. Uh, so no, it's it's not a, a perfect solution, uh, but it it is a step in the right direction. And also, quite frankly, as we have seen in Worcester. There's a lot of things you can't do, right? I mean, you can't just tell them they can't be there. You'll you'll get sued. Right. right. Yeah. You you can't um you can't regulate these people off the corner. And so, say if you do, uh, you give them a citation or you, you throw them in jail overnight. Uh, both uh, unconstitutional. Uh, but say you go ahead and do that. Um, the thing is, is they'll be out the next day back on that corner or they'll be uh, more impoverished than they were in the first place so it's uh, that really just compounds the problem that doesn't uh, that doesn't do anything to solve the issue here and uh, I can be accused of being a liberal but we, we can't really criminalize poverty um, and uh, right so so Hugh what do you think the prospects are for for adoption in the city council how do you, how do you think your colleagues you've got a couple of you know good you've got some great co-sponsors there how do you think the rest of the council is going to weigh in on this or is that that a question you don't want to answer? Well, no, I think that the, uh, you know, the chances of adoption, I, I hope that they're high because, you know, we have to do something. This is, this is really uh, uh, an issue that's mushrooming uh, over the summer, and it doesn't seem to be getting uh, any better. So uh, if it continues to get worse, you can have people getting hit by cars. It's just like it's this could get a lot worse. So we have to do something. And I really do think that this is a common sense approach. It does not pose any constitutional issues. It's not a high cost idea. It, it helps the people that are experts uh, in dealing with this population. It helps this population get services. So uh, I would think that the council will take this up with a uh, with an open mind. Excellent, excellent. Hey, listen, we've been speaking to Hugh Dunn, City Councilor from New Bedford Ward 3. Thanks thanks so much for spending some time with us this afternoon here. Have a great day. Glad to join. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching. And if you uh, would like to get more videos like this, please uh, hit, hit the subscribe button below uh, on the WBSM channel. Subscribe to WBSM, and that way you'll always get the latest videos here from Sunday Brunch and the other wonderful programs on WBSM.